I'm not going to lie, I'm about five videos in on projects that have totally failed and I have failed to make a video on them. And I do know in the Discord you said make a video about it, but honestly, you just wouldn't be interested. If it doesn't work, it doesn't count. Right, I do have something though that hopefully will be slightly interesting. And it's this bag from America. And let me see what I've got in here, yes. It's from Retro Otaku Video Games, and you can see I spent $11.85 there, and I want to show you what I bought. First thing is a Missile Command. The second thing is a Canyon Bomber. The third thing is an Echor the Dolphin. And the fourth and final thing is a Nintendo Blaster. That looks like it's in quite good nick. However, it does say that this item does not work and it was the grand total sum of $1.95. Um, and that was probably plus taxes. You know how it is in the US sometimes. They do like to sting you with these mystery taxes. And uh, yeah, there's not really much to say here. Look, the whole lot came to $11.85 and the sale tax in Michigan added an additional 75 cents. And actually, I didn't even realize this. Look, Missile Command loose, buy one, get one at 195, it says. I don't even know what that means, but it's not here at all. So I basically got Missile Command for free. So hooray, kind of annoyed now. I could probably should have just bought more stuff. So uh, the reason I go to Retro Taku is because it's convenient when I'm there. It's, mm, I'm bored. I need to go somewhere. However, I have bought loads of stuff from there in the past, including this Game Gear that also this item did not work for $9.95. And I'm hoping it will work now because this is the one that I changed the screen on. <laughs> you can see the screen does look lovely. Although I have noticed this battery light does... Does tend to sh to flash, so I got to figure out how to disable that bit of circuitry in there. Oh, but look at that, that space harrier! That looks absolutely gorgeous. And if you've ever had a Game Gear in your life, um, you'll know that they're prone to breaking. Um, and let's see if this one is nope, still broken. That's probably due a screen update. Now let's swap out the old space harrier and let's see first if the Echo the Dolphin has worked. Oh, it's looking good. Let's zoom in. I'm sure you want to see all of the echo action. Oh. It hasn't done anything yet. Now, this could be just blowing in it. This could be difficult for me to take this back. <laughs> but surely if you're getting that, that means the cartridge works, right? Oh, phew. Oh. There's the call of the orca there. I'm not going to lie, that's actually quite a good sort of sample sound effect, but it's also very creepy. Right, let's do this. Come on, how do we just start the bloody thing? Crack on. Yeah. I like that bit. Okay, I mean, I wasn't... I, I can remember, like, never really actually playing Echo um, when I was younger. I used to have it on the Mega Drive, but I don't think I ever really played it as a game. I think I used to just play around with it, use it as a sort of sandbox for jumping out of the water and doing tricks like that. I do remember distinctly, though, there was something like you go down here and you can pull the plug out of the world, and then all the sea creatures get sucked off into the sky in a whirlwind hurricane. And uh, that's kind of how the game begins. But I also remember that you used to have this thing where you could do like a blast, like a sonic boom. Um, anyway, I, I, I might put more hours into this. I hope I do. But that's Echo. And I'm very pleased that's worked. And that was quite expensive though at seven bucks. That was seven Yankee bucks. Now, Canyon Bomber. Shall we unwrap it from its sealed... Mm. Oh, hang on. That actually smelled quite nice. I'll tell you perfumed actually. I wonder if this came from perfumed um, household or if the mother of the household liked to pledge a lot. Mm. Now if you give a deep smell on that though you're getting that nicotine PCB from way back. And this would have been look, $1.95. Now I've never really taken apart one of these. I'm kind of hesitant to take it apart because we've obviously ruined the sticker. Although 
Does it look like it's been taken apart in the past? Because I imagine if you fold a case over like that, that's where you get a seam very suspicious. Maybe it's not a Canyon Bomber, and I'll have to set up some Yoldi Atari to try it out. But let's have a look at the contacts in there. I don't know if you can see that they are looking pretty good. They are looking quite crisp, which is a good sign. It'll probably work, to be honest with you. I mean, how many people really going to be playing that and ramming that cartridge in? It's probably not worn out. So I've never seen one of these books, by the way, because you only ever pick these up loose in car boot sales, or at least you used to in the late 80s and 90s. But yeah, it's got a bunch of games in here. We've already punched up your video world of the first exciting Teddy Games cartridge from Sears. Here's some brand new knockouts. So you've got Canyon Bomber, Bowling, Poker Plus, Arcade Golf, Canyon Ma Cannon Man. Canyon Man. We've got can Canyons on the Mine, Dare Diver, Slots. Got to say that carefully. Football. And then you can use the little wiggly paddles. And I have to admit, most of my Atari uh, VCS gaming isn't from original hardware. Although uh, a friend kindly kindly gave me one to work on for a project, and it's sitting in my cupboard, which I must get out. Um, but, but via these telly games. So I had like the um, Flashback Three, they called it, and that was a little Atari uh, that you plugged in, and it had all the games built in. I've had loads of Atari joysticks that plug straight into the telly, and I've even had one that looks like that with the wobbly paddles, and that had a mixture of games actually, because sometimes they say VCS, but actually they've got later games too, like the 5600. I want to say 56. I think that's what it's called. Anywho, so Canyon Bomber, I would guess, basically has your plane moving like from left to right and you push a button to drop a bomb. That would be my guess on it without reading these detailed instructions. And then they have here Sea Bomber. I wonder what Sea Bomber might be. Probably just the same thing with different graphics. But then you can play Canyon Bomber 2 player. That's really interesting. I'm almost tempted to read how to do that. But then also look, you can have Canyon Bomber uh, game four, game five, two player, two player, and then there's another two player. And then you're back to Sea Bomber one player and sea bomber two player my gosh what variation i mean this would have been so much better than my binatone or uh, i want to say grundig or grandstand that no, was grandstand the gray one with the little knobs pong game really lame so what's this one use your standard paddle controls with this telegame cartridge hold the controller with a red button to your upper left oh what is this actually only for the paddle controls that means i have to get some bloody paddle controllers does it actually... Oh, it does say that. Do It's okay, actually, because um, from Retro Attack in the previous time, I did buy some paddle controllers, so I can play that. Um, yeah, I do like that you says it's got loads of games. It implies it's got loads of games, eight games, but you can see it's just what games one to six are Canyon Bomber and seven, eight are Sea Bomber. So it's kind of at best two games, and I suspect those two are pretty much just the same game. Right, Missile Command... Let's have a little shifty at that one. Again, shall I have the old snipperoo? Mmm, that smells like old wooden tellies. When you turn on an old wooden telly and then you get that smell in your, in your, what do you call it? I'm trying to think, in your parlor. Come to my parlor. Missile Command, look at that guy's hat. Looks like a willy and it's shiny like a willy. So, he is activating the missile defence systems using a telephone and he's got a screen which is clearly a map. So that's good. I mean, we always play it when it's got like a 2D side-on landscape, but he's got the full overview map. So it suggests that perhaps Missile Command is a 3D game, but we're not really aware of that third dimension. So we're only looking at it from the side. That would be interesting. In fact, if anybody's done that, they should do that. So you've got your three uh, bases or whatever, but the three bases are actually set off into that Z direction. There we go. Your commanding orders. Now, we've all played uh, Missile Command, and you... Oh, I can show you. Look. Whoop! Right there. Oh, oh, hello. Being attacked. Missiles everywhere. You have these little liney things going... And actually, there's more than three bases. You've got loads of... Oh, sorry. So loads of buildings and you've got three bases and these things are trying to blow up all your buildings and all your bases and they come in on a straight ballistic line normally and then you go you fire up your little anti-missile well 
your, is it your, something else? I was going to say cruise missile, but that's not what it is. It's the anti-ballistic missiles, and they blow it up. But the cool thing about this is that when they blow it up, it blows it up with a radius. Psh, and any other missiles in that psh, radius get blown up too. It's good fun. I mean, I should imagine anybody watching this, any four of you who are watching this channel, would have already played this game. But it's a great game. It was actually probably the first arcade game that I play, and I remember playing it in Sligo in Ireland. I can't remember the name of the pub or whatever it was, and I was chucking in 10p pieces, like nobody's uh, business. And I think it was 10 pence. I mean, it's Irish money, but it's probably the same kind of thing. Anyway, I think the pound is called, they call it the punt. Now, don't they call the pence bit? You can let me know down below if you really can be bothered. Um, I'm really quite impressed, though, with the quality of these books. I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, story, a lot of lore, so that you really want to, you know, you get into it. And you're, you're probably walking you know, on the bus or something from the way back from the shop, and you're, like, reading this, going, oh, yeah. But it's telling you a lot. I mean, I didn't know any of this, so I'm going to just cover a little bit. It says, aliens from the planet of Krytol have begun an attack on the planet Zardon, so it's not even set on Earth. The Krytolians are warriors out to destroy and seize the planet of Zardon, and Zardon is the last of the peaceful planets. So that's really annoying them. So the Zardonians are skillful and hard-working people. Their cities are built up and rich in resources. It is truly a planet void of crime and violence. Well, until now, Interestingly enough, for such a peaceful race, they've built a powerful defence system. Several anti-ballistic missile bases have been established within the cities of Zardon. The Zardonians are ready for this attack and are prepared to fight to save their cities. Yada, 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 yada. I'm actually quite breathless now, just because I haven't had to read something aloud for years. So the controls are pretty simple. You've got up, left, down, right and diagonally. <laughs> Just this diagonally here. You don't want to go the other diagonals. This is the one that's the important one. You can do the other ones, but bottom left is where you want to go. And this does, of course, use the controller for a change because it would be mental trying to do it with the wheel. I mean, I can't imagine how you do it. So I was never aware of this. So there's obviously a scoring system. I mean, I would just want to survive. I always like Tetris. I don't, I don't score my Tetris. I just want to survive. And this is the same thing here. However, if you're interested in scoring them, you can. So the IC, I, I was going to say ICBMs, but it's not. It's IPBMs. Interplanetary are 25 points a pop. Enemy cruise missiles, 125. Unused anti-ballistic missiles, not really sure. Oh, that's the ones that are left in your base at the end of a round. And then the cities saved. And of course, it just goes after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave. But your bases never rebuild, as far as I'm aware. I mean, I've never seen them rebuild and Possibly reading the instructions would reveal if they do or don't, but uh, that's it. You see, so it's kind of like your all your lives are on the, on the on the line from the very beginning. So it has 34 game variations. Games run through 17 and one play games, 18 through 34 two play games. I quite like the idea of two play games. I mean, if it's got two player missile command, if you both play at the same time, that should be mentally good fun, like defending like mad. Or maybe you're attacking each other, like that James Bond movie where they're playing missile command on that pool table with a see-through plasma telly. And he's going, Mr. Bond, you will die, or something like that. I think they're betting. That's what it was. It was a betting game. So you could play that at home. You could put down a few pounds and then start electrocuting each other by uh, maybe hijacking your foot bath from your gran and putting a, smashing a lamp into it and then dialing up the vibration setting on the foot bath to electrocute your feet more. Something like that. That's the instructions. So interesting enough, games clearly in this era were complicated enough that you needed the manual to show you this games matrix so that you could work out the business logic of the game to figure out what you wanted to play. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's saying, but it seems like all the fast target control, so games 2, 4, 6, 8, you know, basically every other one, are um, they're moving super fast? One, three, four, blah, 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 blah. they're moving slow. Dumb cruise missiles. I'm not sure why they're dumb. Uh, maybe they just sort of really obvious how they they're. Um... Oh, I I kind of think there's there's two two things. So smart might mean they would move 
to kind of zigzag through the air. But I think what it might mean is that they split. Because when you play the game, they definitely have missiles that split. And that was always a bit tricky because it would split into two. Like the warheads would go off in two different directions and that would confuse you. And I think that's what that could be. And then here you've got a children's setting. So 17 is for the kiddie kids. And then here, uh, depending on which game you're selecting, you can either start level 1, level 7, level 11 or level 15. There we go. But I did think I saw something here. Hang on, maybe I'm going mental. But it says game wave 13 is the most difficult. So what's game 15? It's like two beyond the most difficult in the game. I mean, surely that's like a bite wrap around and it's gone back into being easy again. I don't know. No, I'm not going to find out. Right. This is broken. If I open it, it will probably become more broken. However, I am feeling a little bit up for it. And I am... Rapidly looking around the desk for a screwdriver. It's a bloody mess. Look at this. Well, I can't really show you. I've got a very limited pivoting capability here. But uh, trust me when I say it's a mess. So I'm going to try to use this Nintendo screwdriver, which has only got three lobes. No. I was forced to find a better tool. Oh, and even that's not bloody doing it. What did Nintendo use? Are these like pre-Philips? I don't think this has ever been opened, by the way. Am I voiding a warranty or something? Now, I don't suspect it really is broken. Um, at best, or at worst, it's going to be something wrong with a wire. However, I'm going in because I don't care. Honestly, I don't think that these have retained their value because they don't work anymore on a current telly. And in my loft is a massive super scope, and I suspect that also doesn't work. Which is kind of okay because I have retained one CRT, which did try to blow up once already by uh, blowing up a reefer capacitor of all uh, capacitors. So reefer seem to not just limit themselves to BBC micros, but have worked their way into the supply chain of all the old tellers as well. And in fact, that's not the first one because I did notice on Discord um, last week, I think someone had a reefer blow, but I think that was in a bit of hi-fi equipment. Ooh, so that's like your whatever that part is. It's quite nice, isn't it? Is that actually holding? Oh, it was hiding another screw right there. Look, this is really well made. I, I think you'd have had really uh, a hard time trying to break a zapper. Here we go. So this should be the last screw in the moment of Zapper Truth. Let's pop it apart and see what we've got. Oh, no, I'm going to make a prediction. A lens, a photodiode, a micro switch, and really nothing else. Okay, so no real gubbins have come up with this part, apart from this, which is some sort of weight, just to give it a bit more heft. In fact, look, there's one on each side. So they're just giving it a bit more weight on there. Oh, and there's one in the handle too, look. It's just a lump of metal, that's all it is. So there's your micro switch assembly. And you can hear it's a, um, what would you call that? Hmm. We can hear that it it's activates the switch and as you push it, it resets itself. So you have to let go to, to recycle the um, mechanism. There was a word for that, but I've since forgotten it. And inside there is your photodiode. So it's all just a tube with a photodiode on the end and some conditioning electronics that are basically a transistor. So they'll be taking that uh, light, filtering it uh, to the right level, and then if uh, just me giving a measurement, I guess, of whether or not it's seen that bit on the screen, I think that goes, it flashes white and it's, it's measuring that scanning line thing. You know, stuff that just doesn't exist anymore in uh, modern tellies, and that's why nothing works. So uh, there's really not really much more to explore in that, to be honest with you. I don't think there is a problem with this. It's just going to be in the wire, and we've got no means of really testing it right now. Or the will. Right, getting this back together now. I have to admit, these old screws seem to be quite difficult to screw in. I mean, these ones are really particularly weird, and I'll show you why in a sec, just after I change my bit. Um, 
because these are flathead screws with a little dimple taken out so I don't know why they've got that <laughs> center dimple just to be a bit fancy but the other screws um, I'm not quite sure what's the head on them I, I'm not sure if they're Phillips or posi drive or just something else because you got to remember back back in day um, I think there were some variants on those and if this was made in Japan it could be a, a totally I was going to say totally different spec. I mean, it can't be that different. They're all quite similar, but there are different um, specs because, believe it or not, certain um, individuals or companies actually own the patent of some of those. They're not just like just thrown out there and then just uh, an ISO number attached to them, although maybe some of them have now. Uh, yeah, they actually are proprietary, some of these things. I mean, that's quite nice as a prop, isn't it? Anyway, it didn't work. You'd probably take the wire off, but not cut it, just like disable it in here and undo it. So you've just got this. I've got two of these. I could have a, be a bit of a sharpshooter there. Right. So, well, there you go. My interesting haul for how much was it again? Twelve and a half bucks. Answers down below to the question. Was this worth twelve dollars? And are these worth anything? Um, as I said, this is... $2.95 and this was supposed to be $1.95 and I got the... which one did I get for free? I actually got the Missile Command for free but it looks like they charged me the Canyon Bomber. No. What? <laughs> I actually got the Canyon Bomber for free but they said I got the Missile Command for free so I guess it's the lower of the two but uh, yeah. Am I quids in on this little haul? If I chucked it on eBay now would I be rich in Retro Wonga? Thanks for